During the new normal, more and more brands are increasing their spends on programmatic advertising. As per the Statista report in 2020, the digital advertising industry across India spent around 62% of its ad spends on direct media purchases, while 38% was spent on programmatic purchases. Our next panel discussion is on Sharpshoot with programmatic advertising. I would like to welcome Vishal Chinchankar, CEO of Medicine Digital and Medicine Alpha to moderate this discussion. So hello and uh, welcome to the Economic Times Mar MarTech Asia 2021. Uh, uh, it's, today's discussion topic is sharp shoot with programmatic advertising. Now, before we move on to the, the conversation and the discussion panels, let me just talk about a few things about how the world's ecosystem is really moving on the programmatic side. Well, today, no marketer wants a spill of his marketing dollar. They want to pay for as delivered to the right people at the right time and depend less on the spray and pray method of digital advertising. Of course, programmatic really helps the brands to target the audiences across the platforms and the reach of relevant customers. Uh, also today, programmatic advertising is across the globe and is growing fairly, fairly rapidly. Um, just to talk about a few numbers, as per Statista report, 2020 digital advertising industry across India spent about 62% of its ad spend on direct media purchases, while 38% was spent on programmatic purchases. So, so that gives you a broader view of how the needle is really shifting more towards even the programmatic. And, and hopefully we'll probably hear from the eminent panelists uh, how, this, uh, how this trend is really gonna make a big difference in our coming years. Uh, we're gonna to touch upon not just the trends, but also in areas like the brand safety zone when it comes to programmatic. Uh, are really budgets going up when it comes to programmatic? And uh, and is it is it more like a simple reach or an effective reach uh, when it comes to the marketing campaign for most of the advertisers? Uh, on that note, uh, let me just quickly get a round of an introduction to our eminent panelists today. I have Arjo. Arjo, do you want to just uh, jump in and introduce yourself? Sure. Hey, my, my name is Arjo. Uh, I have been with OYO currently for a little more than five years now, five years, three months to be precise. I am currently in, in a role where I am uh, driving the product growth on the supply side of our ecosystem, which is hotel and homeowners. Uh, prior to this, I have been uh, involved in the consumer side of things, mostly in uh, the international expansion markets, which we had, which is outside of India and China. Thanks, Arjo. Sid? Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Vishal. So I look after MIQ Digital uh, for a bunch of countries now um, in Asia Pacific region. And yeah, look forward to have a great discussion and see how we can uh, you know, get this journey of programmatic, which I think will be going on for this decade, to, you know, get it more excited, get more insights out of this discussion. Yeah, absolutely. We all look forward to that. Thanks, Sid. Uh, Rohit, would you just jump in, please? Hi, everyone. This is Rohit. I'm currently working with AirAsia. I currently uh, look after platform growth initiatives and in marketing perspective. So pretty much working on uh, uh, building uh, the own touch points for AirAsia, uh, which are scalable in long run. Uh, in my previous role, I've been... Uh, uh, handling the regional programmatic buys for AirAsia Group as a whole, uh, which spans across all the markets where airline operates in around 13 different markets in the APAC region. Yeah. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, Gagan, can I request you to please introduce yourself? My name is Gagan. Uh, I work with HDFC Securities uh, uh, last seven months uh, here. And uh, prior to that, I have been with the e-commerce and with the early other broking companies uh, in the as handling digital marketing, digital analytics technology and so on. Thanks, Vagan. And uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Vishal Jinchankar. I am the CEO of Madison Digital and Madison Alpha. These are some of the units that I run. And I've been into this agency side of the business for almost more than a couple of decades now. So on that note, thank you very much, uh, my dear panelists. And, and let's have some exciting time ahead. 
So my first question, and I'm going to, uh, you know, get the expert, the MIQ expert, Mr. Sid, uh, to talk about some of the trends in, in, in programmatic today. Yes, Sid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, Vishal. So I think, uh, you know, I think one of the big trends, and, you know, uh, I would look at the lens from India market. One of the big trend is that uh, there is digital transformation and digital acceleration, which is happening due to pandemic, right? And uh, what is happening is that, uh, so till now, like if you look at the last decade, the big uh, channels for di digital uh, are have been Google and Facebook, have been search and social. And of course, they will remain there. They will remain big. They will grow as they grow uh, in this decade as well. But there are a lot of brands who are also looking at scaling beyond this. And you know, in, in that, there, there are a bunch of interesting things happening. So what we are, if you look at the entire media landscape, right? So even in last decade, the TV, traditional TV and print was very, very large, uh, which I think is uh, in this decade is, you know, the, the contours of that will shift quite a lot. So traditional TV is now getting transformed into the OTT digital way of uh, entertainment. And uh, you have the mo online video, mobile video growing, obviously, at a very, very good rate, but also connected TV, which will come into place. And, and that will be transformational because you have, you will have a big screen, which will be digital and uh, traditional TV will give way to digital TV in a very big way. And, you know, big screen obviously has its own impact. So uh, this decade, we will see in India market, this uh, changing fundamentally. Uh, and the second big thing which will happen is that um, we have large middle class now who is comfortable buying online, who is comfortable browsing online. That middle class will grow even further. And for, for you to reach as a brand, to reach out to them, you will add a lot of other channels than search and social. You will add, uh, you know, obviously the, uh, the entire open internet, you will add uh, other formats like digital auto home, connected TV, and with 5G, new formats will come up as well. And definitely five years down the line, probably internet will not look uh, like the way it is looking. So yeah. in summary, uh, pandemic has accelerated transformation towards digital. And that's where these new channels will come into place. Uh, and the challenge for marketers would be how do how how do I make that transition from the old world to the new world, uh, which is accelerating at an even faster rate than what it was. Yeah, well said. I couldn't disagree anymore with you, Sid. I think fantastic. But I want to, uh, while you've been more of a programmatic specialist and and that's your view, I want to also go to the marketers and and probably try and understand whether. Do they agree with you or is there more that they think that's going to be fleshing out in terms of trend? And, I, and I'm going to reach out to Rohit first. Rohit? Uh, definitely uh, agree with Sidan in terms of uh, how the overall media landscape has evolved in India uh, per se. But uh, coming uh, to programmatic specific trends, I uh, think uh, it's going more privacy centric, right? So. Uh, with with uh, increased focus on privacy from a uh, regulation standpoint or uh, the big players like Apple and Google taking steps towards privacy. I think the way uh, the advertisers and the ecosystem is approaching the media bodies is changing a lot, right? So that's one of the evolving trend uh, along with the evolution of new media types like uh, OT, OTTs, connected TVs and so on. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, thanks for your uh, for your point of view and your perspective on the trends part. But you know, I'm, I I want uh, Gagan to jump in and also give me his side of uh, the story because I believe you know we're in this ecosystem in this world where we're dealing with these two giants. Uh, of course, we're in a, a duopoly world, and and I think somewhere one of the challenges is also to you know consolidate platforms to get a one single consumer view, right? So, Gagan, do you have a perspective on would that would you would you also look at that as one of the biggest trends coming in uh, for your business? See, uh, my view on programmatic is probably a little different in the sense that I have always focused on digital marketing, so I have always thought it has been there. I don't see. I'm sure COVID has uh, has had had an impact, but even before that, I was like a, a complete. Uh, uh, 
programmatic kind of uh, evangelist right uh, but i so my views are more like uh, more on the sense of the how programmatic will probably become more mature with time because challenges have been that uh, you cannot probably do uh, for example in normal marketing automation right i can actually send various communications to my customers and i can kind of orchestrate which communication goes when based on how they have reacted they can't do the same in programmatic so well right you can just do some kind of retargeting but you cannot say that i will do these uh, kind of communications or impressions and then if the consumer has reacted to this way to my communication then i can do this right so i think programmatics uh, quality has to drastically improve uh, in terms of what it can deliver and i have tried this so many times but i have never been able to get to that quality of programmatic some of that i think is the bigger thing which has to happen now uh, because a lot of the technology i have seen keeps improving from 30% to 70% to 80% accuracy but the adoption is extremely low and the moment it touches that 98% 99% accuracy suddenly there is an inflection point like the way text to voice happened like text to voice is researched for 35 years right but it kind of uh, had an inflection point 5 6 years back right uh, so similarly uh, it has to get to a point where it gives so much value the way search gave right uh, about 10 15 years back search was already had reached that point that everybody wanted to do google search right almost everybody had 70% of spend on google search at one point in time not as reduced mostly i think uh, but programmatic has never reached that level probably because it's not reached that inflection point so that quality see all of us have gone through some some uh, some conversation like this one where all of us have talked about ki this retargeting is very painful very it is overdone right but uh, at no point in time i have had any conversation with anyone where somebody has said you know retargeting is good but it is in control i've only heard i've never heard a positive light not that it is not positive but i have heard negative sides or neutral inputs on retargeting right nobody has come up with a real solution that i know of within my limits which is a really good retargeting right or really good programmatic which has given good value right there's always been a uh, either an audiences play uh, a simple audiences and exposing audiences from one from one uh, dmp to another and so on right or uh, but it has never has the marketing automation and dmp then all coming together with a good communication plan and programmatic it has always been very very uh, Pay spray and pay equivalent. Correct. So I think that is, I think, a bigger play than uh, something like connected TV and all of that coming in will come in now. They will start their journey now, so they will get probably mature in five to seven years. It, that is that is the kind of time taken even today. Surprisingly, right? it should not be that much. Right? But some other things which have been there, they have to get fully mature. That's my view. Thanks, Gagan. I think you made some real hard statements, and I'm going to now move to Argo. Whether you really agree with uh, Gagan or not. Uh, and I'm Gagan. I'm, I'm going to hold that point because I'm touching upon a lot more challenges, and I'll give you a lot more chances to talk about it. But Argo, do you agree with Gagan? Yeah. So uh, from a perspective, uh, I would like to start by saying that uh, I have also essentially uh, began my um, marketing career with Oyo itself. So, and uh, Oyo being uh, at least on the consumer side, it has always been a, a digital product itself. and all our consumer acquisition etc has happened there so most of our paid spends have essentially happened on performance marketing channels itself uh, right uh, whereas uh, i would add on the pa- partner acquisition side is now that we are beginning to invest in digital acquisition uh, for a large time it has been uh, uh, driven by uh, feet on street but now we are beginning to experiment and see how we can uh, get this acquisition done digitally as well right so uh, essentially i i also have a similar pers- per, uh, perspective to see but from uh, the future that programmatic holds for us uh, i think our, uh, one of the biggest trends which will come up very soon as uh, rohit also touched upon is the uh, cookie based marketing will will go away right which essentially means as uh, gagan was saying and that problem is going to probably become increase will will become a bigger and bigger that how do you personalize more right so that personalization uh, uh, element of your uh, marketing will essentially probably go down but your 
uh, contextualization will probably increase. So uh, while Google to a large extent will still have uh, uh, data on your interest, etc., they having control of the browser, but uh, many other players will not even have that, right? So they will mostly have access to uh, where the user currently is and what the context of the user currently is. So uh, I think that that change will be quite big uh, uh, over the next few years. There is some, some directional sense we have as to how that change will happen, but the execution uh, details is still, still unknown to us. So while we can prepare in our minds as to what is going to come, but uh, uh, I think once the changes are rolled out is, is when, when we'll, we will uh, get, get to see how it uh, all, all pans out. Thanks, Argo. And, uh, you know, uh, the jury is actually out and uh, we have two guys saying that it's still in a nascent state. It has a long way to go. We still need programmatic to shape up how the other mediums have really shaped up and really show the uh, pudding of the proof. Um, and, and well, we did speak about a lot more challenges and coming to the challenges and I'm going to touch upon real, real challenges in our life because uh, we all have been sort of circling into these challenging challenges. We did touch upon cookie-less world, which is nearing soon to us. Uh, of course, uh, brand safety again remains a large question mark. Uh, you still have uh, a ad fraud or a reliability sort of a concern, and then measurabilities. Long, long, uh, broad spectrum of uh, challenges, but but I'm sure uh, there are technologies which are definitely working near towards uh, you know closing upon these challenges. But I'm going to now reach to uh, Sid, and uh, Sid, I want you to you know give me give me a take on on what Argo said or. Or, and even Gagan said, um, and that's more from their perspective because that's more largely, I'm assuming it's more performance uh, driven marketing is what they do. Yeah, no, I agree. So you know, both of them have not worked with MIQ till now. So that's why they are saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I think, I think the, you know, obviously these are the challenges and that's where uh, you know, uh, so it, it was a half joke, but it was a half truth as well, because, you know, MIQ has been working on programmatic for since 2010, which is, you know, now more than 11 years. And uh, during earlier years, these, you know, problems were even higher. Um, so, but obviously markets, uh, the, uh, you know, the US or UK and those kinds of markets where digital has been flourishing for a bit longer than India, you know, these challenges were also there during that time. And then uh, as you bring in all together, right, as you work with the DSPs, which are figuring out how to solve these problems, uh, right? So for example, from a privacy angle, definitely, uh, you know, as the wheelers paradigm will come in, what, what you're talking about here is how do you look at data from various perspectives? It, can be, it could be contextual signals, it could be uh, you know, device ID based signals, it could be first party based uh, signals which you are using. So there are various ways by which you are able to overcome these challenges. Of course, old world will not remain, you will have to work in the new paradigm, but then you can still achieve uh, same results, but with a different approach uh, is what we are talking about here. So, uh, and, and I always believe when I was at Google also, I always believed that you know, uh, when you are looking at display and video and then other channels, basically, they have to be backed by data. You know, you cannot uh, do these things without data. And that's, uh, and again, so that's why I agree with both Arjo and Gagan that, you know, the data driven is what will really help. And then uh, uh, I would also say that, uh, you know, if, if you look at how the technology has evolved, right? So one is the data layer. You want to understand your consumer. Uh, for that, you have your, if, if you have a data management platform. So, for example, we have uh, MIQ has a data management platform. We have close to 200 global data partnerships, uh, which uh, we have acquired through working with 30 plus countries uh, worldwide. And whenever we enter a country, we localize the product. So, we end up also having local data partners as well. So, when you have such a vast data set, then you are able to kind of have a very, very rich data of consumers. Uh, and then from there, you are able to also enrich the first party data of the brand and start with a very strong footing uh, of 
you know, who are the right consumers who you should be targeting and how kind of thing. And programmatic allows that. Programmatic allows amalgamation of first party data and third party data. It will, it is cookie based and device based and other signals, but obviously cookie based will not remain, but there will be other signals which will still remain, right? So, and, and there are more signals which will be coming in as well. So that is one part. And the second part is, how do you then also bring the data and analytics angle and then bring it to the media? How do you bring it all together? Uh, that is where a lot of challenges will get resolved because programmatic also allows you to look at how different channels are performing for you and then how can you optimize on that? Which channels are better suited from a targeting perspective or which channels are better able to sharpshoot and which channels are not? And then you progressively eliminate those channels which are not working for you, but uh, focus more on the channels which are working well for you. Uh, so with, with that, you are able to have even performance with programmatic, which is, uh, you know, comparable to when you are moving beyond search and social and moving into the display and the video world, because you are actually moving from the pull world to the push world. And that's why, you know, you can definitely have a certain level of performance and that's how you are able to scale as well. The, the second big problem which programmatic solves is also, you need to have the upper funnel and mid funnel channels going for you as well. Because if you don't have that, and if you just rely on the lower funnel programmatic campaigns, then you are basically just running one horse and, uh, you know, there is no other horse which is, you know, kind of supporting. So, you know, if you, if you don't have a strong upper funnel, mid funnel focus, then you will not have sufficient amount of brand firepower to support your performance campaigns. And that leads to stagnation as well. Uh, and, and the good news is that as compared to traditional TV and print, programmatic will be more measurable, more data-driven, uh, more analytics-led, and that's how you can basically see the impact of programmatic campaigns to your lower funnel campaigns as well. You can measure the assisted conversions which are happening as well, apart from the direct conversions. And that's how then you are able to optimize all the channels for you also in a better way. Thanks, Sid. On that note, you know, and I just picked up some of the keywords from what you answered. And, and of course, you, 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 you come from an era of uh, hardcore techies and you build a lot of stacks, you have a lot of data and you have some, some sort of a proof to clearly prove the points that you've been making. But I again want to go back to Orgo and Gagan because this is going to be really exciting now. <laughs> okay, cookie-less world, we're nearing soon. That's a statement what even uh, Sid was talking, everybody else was talking about. It's likely to have impact on your dollar spend. On one end, you have Google trying to build something called as a flock. Uh, Facebook is trying to build something called as a cappy, right? And what really matters is your first party data. So although you sit on a lot of first party data, Gagan, so do you, and so do you, uh, uh, Rohit, right? How effectively are all you three guys using your current first party data? to make sure that the dollar spent on really remarketing or whatever, or dynamic marketing is, is well uh, uh, given you and well a e cost or whatever. So over to you, Gagan. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want everybody, all three of us to start speaking together. Yeah, so <laughs> see, uh, HDFC as a group technically works only on first party. Uh, it is people like me who actually kind of uh, argue with the rest of the above management, above us saying, you know, let's not work only on first party, right? Uh, but generally the overall group level thought is, first party is enough, HDFC being HDFC, right? The nine lakh crore company, you are the largest and so on, you have everything, right? Uh, so that way is uh, how effective we are, like there's a very difficult uh, question, right? Everybody is effective, I think, that's why where we are and want to be much more effective where we want to be, correct? But Fundamentally, using first party is uh, the complete DNA of uh, HDFC. We have significant privacy constraints beyond what we talked about on the on this session. But as a as a financial services house, and HDFC particularly being the one of the most compliant or the most compliant company in the country, it, uh, it is very easy for a company like HDFC to lose business for compliance. Uh, and I can say it in public, right? Compliance comes far ahead of anything else here, right? So yeah, we have certain certain places where I can't go past till the time the compliance 
rules change or if customer XP or customer's own uh, interest changes. But other than that, uh, we are trying to do our best to use first party mode. Uh, we have uh, traditionally been a, a branch based business, which has started growing into more digital based business now. And uh, one uh, statement I make many a times that I've been here seven months. What I have learned here is that for a large elephant to move, it has to have something really powerful to move to. If there is some value, but it is a smaller value, they don't move, right? So I think uh, one thing which has accelerated in last one and a half years is that the value of moving is drastically increased because branches were very, very tough to use during the initial lockdown and so on. So I think there is a clear value for the company to now see uh, the movement. We were moving a lot towards online based. So it was a very offline based firm. It has a part in online, but significant offline percentage wise. Right? Uh, now we are obviously doing the same thing at a more, at a much more accelerated pace. Right? And uh, we are uh, building uh, a lot of it on our own also. Uh, which is uh, obviously taking more time, <laughs> building a lot of it on our own uh, because, again, because of compliance and there's so many other reasons that you want to do a lot of things in-house. So so that also takes more time, but uh, probably there have been uh, one discussion where I wanted, that we discussed about building our own DMP, just one discussion on a brainstorming. So, so a lot of those things are there. Right? Uh, so that's what I can say, uh, that we are moving towards it. We are decent we have to do more obviously uh, and yeah, i think flock and all uh, there's a lot of uh, change is happening by google they are trying so many things uh, i think they're not really sure of what they where they will go but it is good uh, that we are moving in that direction because unless there is a real necessity on privacy which cookie less thing i think is a great thing right uh, now that i have hdfc blood and i talk about compliance so strongly right i think the whole Cookie-less thing is great. I think it is pushing uh, the borders of all technology, architecture, thinkers, all the marketers, all the ad tech, ad tech studs of the world to think beyond whatever they have thought for 25 years right? and, and do something new. Right? In that perspective, I think it is great. I think something new will emerge in the next two or three years. Thanks, Arvind. Uh, uh, you know, even airline industry uh, today collects a huge amount of PII as well as anonymized um, data, right? So Rohit, uh, I want you to jump in and give me a perspective of the kind of data, which is your rich, uh, you know, data set that you've already collected or keep collecting. How do you, you know, utilize them? How do you effectively remarket or uh, whichever way you reach out to your own customers or, or build a lot more stack of your own uh, first party into, into a, a lookalike or a, or a second party? Sure. Uh, so uh, for this particular uh, question, right, uh, our utilization of first party data varies from market to market, right? So it's different on uh, to what level we use and establish, uh, established markets like Malaysia or Thailand, uh, where the brand is strong and we have a huge volume of uh, database present in this market. Uh, first party data takes precedence over rest of the targeting options for us, right? So uh, likewise in markets like uh, Vietnam or any other Indochina markets where brand is still in stage of uh, building strength, uh, we do rely on the other targeting options to uh, acquire new users and uh, get market penetration in those markets. Uh, and uh, coming to the uh, depth of data we have as an airline. Uh, we, uh, since inception also airline, uh, AirAsia has been focusing on uh, direct sales as a channel, right? So AirAsia.com and AirAsia app have been uh, the important channels for AirAsia. Likewise, I mean, uh, no other airline in the industry or globally also have that level of contribution coming from own channels, right? So either they, get the bookings through OTAs or uh, the offline sales channels and stuff. But Arisha has been uh, constantly pushing for direct touch points with customer to maximize the um, customer experience for that sake, right? So 
it's not just about uh, uh, getting them to book the flight and fly with us, but it's about adding value to the services we offer, right? So may it be the onboard, onboarding meal, right? So we make it personalized based on the user's intent, maybe in his past uh, transaction, or uh, trying to recommend uh, right seat selection options, right baggage options, based on how many passengers are flying with us or that sort of data points are all, uh, always been present. And uh, uh, since the uh, COVID time, right, what uh, we have been trying to achieve uh, uh, at regional level, uh, mainly in Southeast Asia region, is to pivot our businesses to super app. So on top of airline services, we are building services uh, related to OTA. If you check out the super app now, we. Uh, uh, not only sell tickets for Air Asia, but we sell for 700 different airlines on our platform. We have been uh, mm -hmm. uh, selling uh, hotels and hotel plus flight packages. Uh, at the same time, we have been uh, leveraging our uh, uh, on-ground logistics to strengthen the e-commerce businesses like food delivery, ride hailing. So if, if, uh, if you are a customer in Malaysia, you would uh, right now see 17 different line of businesses that we operate in, right? So all these businesses have been built on the uh, depth of data we had from the airline. So it's not uh, just been used for the sake of uh, improving our targeting efficiency, but to uh, increase our baselines and uh, pivot ourselves towards more uh, super app uh, direction rather than just focusing on a specific niche for these airlines, right? So that's how we have been uh, approaching the first part. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, uh, to give us a perspective, but uh, you made a statement that you're also getting into marketplace and getting into hospitality, although they're entering your territory. So just be a little careful. Anyway, on that note, Olga, I want to move to you and, and ask you a question on uh, transparency, okay? And I want to ask you a question on two levels of transparency. One is the cost of exposure, right? Is there a leakage? Because there are, uh, at every level, whether it's a DSP, SSP, and there are commissions and leakages. Yeah, so I, I need your perspective on that. And on placements, right? Very often uh, you run an English ad, uh, and India being, uh, you know, a very vernacular uh, language content consumption country, uh, very often what happens is that English ad is run on a vernacular placement that possibly may also give a sort of a, you know, a bad taste to the consumer. I want to know on placement as well as on cost, what is your perspective on So So uh, I'll, uh, I'll explain how we handle it at OU and probably uh, more, more in-depth uh, uh, answers can be uh, given by the rest. So uh, at OU, we do not run our programmatic in-house. Right, it is it is outsourced. Right, so the uh, understanding that we have with the agencies who run programmatic for us, uh, we have a clear CPI understanding with them. So, which is essentially a cost per install understanding. Right, and and all all of the the uh, installs which we get and are uh, reported go through singular as well as uh, uh, M filtrate, which is our fraud detection part. Right, so. Essentially, because our uh, pricing is at a cost per install, right? Most of the headache which happens behind is essentially taken care of. That is one. Uh, we also have down funnel uh, expectation benchmarking done with them, right? What uh, what is the sign up percentage of that install going to be? What is the conversion rate going to be of that install? So on and so forth, right? So that essentially takes care of uh, of uh, the uh, Ruas perspective of the campaign as this is the understanding which we run the campaigns on with most of our agencies, right? With respect to vernacular, uh, currently all of the campaigns we are running are in English. No, hold uh, on, hold on. Or, or go hold on. Yeah. You need to answer my question. Are there leakages? While you may be doing it on a cost per acquisition or whatever install to safeguard your sort of investment level. But programmatic as an ecosystem, do you foresee any leakages in that? No, so uh, to be honest, uh, because we've run in this format with the uh, with our agencies, 
we have fortunately not not seen much uh, and uh, also i would say that uh, from a brand perspective the uh, we have paid marketing as one of our last priorities right so the amount of money we also spend on programmatic is not a very large budget to be honest okay. so firstly we 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 don't spend much oh. right our focus our uh, product and technology focus essentially goes behind uh, trying to create growth loops improve our uh, referral engines etc etc and then uh, whatever is is left we essentially uh, go and invest in our performance channels and so on and so forth right so yeah so uh, while while the others might have we we haven't seen much so that that is one uh, also hence we have so if you see our product uh, our product especially our app is present in english mostly and also in hindi and in hindi we haven't really seen uh, much uptick of uh, traffic uh, hence uh, we essentially stuck to pushing from a product development perspective also we focused on english as a language for our app right hence on an acquisition side also we haven't really gone into the domain of creating creatives which are hindi based or like anything we only focus on english based creatives itself and hence uh, the language copy in the creatives are also essentially english so the uh, placements are also essentially taken care of so how do you control that your english ad is not placed on a vernacular that's not in your control right correct so what What, what, what we try to do do there is one uh, we have uh, reviews with our agencies where we essentially go through where uh, uh, our ads are being shown and how uh, can we improve it uh, regularly so that's one uh, and and two we we also uh, go go over with them in the reviews uh, and looking at uh, data at a inventory level of how our performance is how our uh, click through rates are etc etc and then wherever we are uh, doing doing well we scale it up and whether we are not we essentially scale it up correct right. thanks argo and said i want to reach out to you do you agree with argos on the cost part that there are no leakages is a statement that argos made do you agree with that yeah in the sense uh, it's basically a display and video as a medium right so there will be there could be what do you mean by leakages for example because you know we are talking about brand safety we are talking about bunch of things here so how would you define leakage vishal <clears throat> so i am referring to uh, additional cost or a markup that has been put up on programmatic wise hmm no so yeah meaning mig doesn't believe in those things uh, you know th- that's not the right way to do but it, as right? an ecosystem does that exist as an ecosystem probably that can exist but i would say things are becoming very quickly more and more transparent right and uh, so i would say there are three three things which are very fundamental marketers should look at and they are now looking at very very proactively because Uh, there is definitely a need in the market to go beyond search and social and scale up on programmatic as well right so one is you know brand safety when when we started our business in india we realized that you know we, we by default put in brand safety in all our campaigns but not uh, every one was appreciating that right our cost because of that used to go slightly higher than the cpms which would be present in the indian market and we and you know Uh, for example i spoke internally i said that you know for india market for some campaigns if brand is not uh, you know uh, brand is saying that you know price is more important for me than brand safety can we remove it and the blanket answer for us is no you know we just cannot remove brand safety we we would rather say no to that campaign than you know in any way compromise our brands our clients Uh, brand safety uh, focus or our focus on brand safety uh, whichever way right so that's the hard stand which we had to take got it and um, what what's your perspective on on the placement question the second part of that question uh on the the uh, vernacular ads for example the vernacular yeah english ads shown on vernacular content yeah yeah how do yeah, you also yeah so i think this is it's i would not say that this is a completely solved problem right because you know our internet in india started with english speakers and that's why most of the internet in india is right now developed for english speakers so i don't think it's a 100% solved problem that's where again if you have more signals coming in like for example we also use contextual signals apart from 
uh, what Argo talked about in terms of the placements and the CTR signals, etc. And then basis those additional signals, you can you know uh, have right uh, language uh, and right ads to be placed in the right placements. And I would say, uh, meaning uh, Argo's approach is fairly robust and with more signals added, it can be uh, made even better as well as we go along. There's no end to making anything better. So, uh, and making it 100% will, I don't think will ever be a stage where we will reach, but definitely we will keep improving every six months, every uh, three months as well. And uh, yeah, meaning I, I think it will evolve in the right direction as we go. So, so, so the answers are more moving towards Gagan's point. And, and but Vishal, uh, the whole point on placements of English on vernacular, the question itself is not correct in my view. Why because a user will see ads for different brands in different languages and they will be happier differently. Because India is not a Hindi or an English market or any other language. Uh, it's a mix of languages, right? I like, uh, let's say a few years back, I would have liked an ad of a of a laptop in English, but something else in Hindi, even though, so my CTRs and my data signals will be different. So we probably have to use significant data signals for that, as Siddharth said. Plus, probably one thing we can say that when you're using a good third-party DMP, you should start getting some some good signals from the from the audience data. What is the preference of the audience? For that matter, uh, DFC being again the whole compliance thing uh, here that we have, there was a huge discussion once that we should ask every user of HDFC whether they like which language, and then we use the ad in that language, which is theoretically correct, but practically very uh, inconvenient from a perspective of ease of use, right? Uh, but that is how we started, right? As a but marketer, then, but as a consumer, it is still a, because it, it look at what Geo's coming up in a very big way. Geo Google partnership is going to keep adding five more million month on month, right? And majority of the growth is coming out of rural in from tier two and tier three. Again, yeah. tier two, tier three, we uh, there, there's a lot of content consumption in the local language, right? And will a com consumer be comfortable viewing our English ad there? But a consumer may like two languages is what I'm trying to say. Okay. Same consumer will like two languages for different brands and for different kind of uh, product they're consuming. So it okay. has to be even more deeper than the consumer, right? If that's why I think a computer ad five, five years back, if somebody is selling me a computer HP and they give a Hindi ad of HP 10 years back, let us say, people will not like it at that time. Computer means English, right? Now it has changed. I agree, right? And if somebody, but something else I like in Hindi. So, so it is more difficult than just the consumer. Got it. That's my view. I'm, I'm probably being overly rebel here, but yeah. A view is a view. There is no right or wrong, is what of my opinion is. Anyway, on that note, I want to just go around to everyone and ask one question. Uh, so, Gagan, uh, you have a strong point of view on programmatic. Are you going to increase your spend in programmatic? I have already been increasing. And uh, as a percentage, I think they will continue to go up, go up for some more time. Very data centricity. So I have significant data centric approach uh, since uh, anybody in this industry will have. So as long as my data gives me good uh, in, uh, output, so far the output has been very good in programmatic. Right? Uh, one of the big things that we are trying to do is to generate a lot more first party data now to our own uh, campaign managers, which gives us a lot more space to uh, work and uh, the market in our industry is expanding. I am in securities, right? And last so one answer, month, your answer been... is yes, you will increase your spends. Correct, correct. Yeah. Okay. So on the short answer, yes. Argo, how much will you increase or and how much will you increase? Yeah, so uh, firstly, it's it's no, not a direct yes or no for me because uh, uh, as, as I'm taking care of the partner uh, side of the story now, we are still mostly on most of the channels we are in an experimental mode right now. So if okay. uh, if the question is that are we going to extensively experiment on programmatic, then that answer is yes, for sure. Uh, but uh, only time will tell because we are uh, parallelly uh, uh, experimenting on many other things as well. So whichever wins wins the fight essentially wins the. Thanks, uh, thanks, Argo. Uh, to you, Rohit. Uh, for us, uh, within your business direction itself, right? All piece of digital marketing spends are going to increase, uh, which will uh, also result in increase in programmatic spends. 
and how much i would say at least 15 to 20 percent that's a big number and i'm sure uh, sid is going to give us a perspective of how the indian industry is moving in the programmatic space sid you want to jump in i think sid yeah. will say all should be given <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, actually, no, no, we, we nice, in fact, we, yeah, I know, uh, we speak to many brands and we say that, okay, you know, if you are at this stage, then, you know, you're better off probably investing right now on search and social, right? Don't look at programmatic right now, because we, you know, programmatic probably has earned a bad name in between. And so we, we definitely don't want to contribute it uh, to, to it in any way. Uh, but more importantly, obviously, you know, if we, do something, uh, you know, in terms of like a misadvice to a client that's not going to help us in our uh, business any which ways, right? So we are very, very careful on that. I will just add one more dimension. I think the uh, one of the big layer which is coming up from an advising perspective is e-commerce based. For example, Amazon sponsored ads obviously have been growing. What we are seeing now is that now from there, it will move to uh, Amazon programmatic as well, Amazon DSP as well. And, and it's it's not going to move. It's going to expand in there because obviously there are shopping audiences on Amazon and there are uh, and they are showing their interest in various ways. And then Amazon's DSP is going to help in also uh, target uh, you know those consumers because they are very clearly showing the shopping intent. And from there, you can do branding, you can also do retargeting, you can do prospecting. So I think that is a big layer which is going to get added. Um, you know, on programmatic and obviously it will be backed by Amazon data and audiences, which, which is obviously invaluable for any brand. So, so are you saying that the spends will increase, not increase? Spends, spends, is, spends are going to increase, but they are going to even more increase because of this added dimension, which is coming in. Which and we what's are, your sense? If you had to put it in, in a percentage, what, what is the sense that you can give this? Uh, so, so for example, I would say like Amazon programmatic might double right uh, connected tv is growing by more than 50 percent so these are the areas in programmatic which are growing uh, like ott uh, the video led uh, campaigns they are obviously also growing maybe 30 percent or 50 percent range as well so there are programmatic uh, as an overall business is growing but there are pockets which are growing very fast as well okay thank you very much let me give you my perspective i think it is here to stay and it is just going to grow maybe People have not experimented enough and more, but a lot of people are moving in that direction. That's going to give a lot more uh, boost to this particular space. Eventually, over a period of time, you will find a lot more transparency. What search was to what search is today has been a shift. And that's probably we'll probably expect from programmatic as well. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to ask a last question to all of you guys. Uh, I'm going to go around and it's it's a question that you guys have to answer in a single word yeah just be mindful just a single word with respect to programmatic what keeps you awake at night Sid all the misinformation which is out there misinformation misinformation Gagan accuracy accuracy or go flock flock okay because I don't have to explain this yeah <laughs> and Rohit uh, for me it's complexity Okay, well said. Okay, thank you, everybody. I think uh, a big word of thanks to the entire panelists. I think uh, really we got a lot of uh, perspectives coming in from various different angles of programmatic today. Uh, I probably felt the needle was moving on the left and then on the right, but I think there is no right or wrong answer. What you think is right is right. And this is exactly what the jury came out with. But having said that, I think the, the line that we need to all take off with is that obviously it is still a little long way to go, but it's, it's going to be, people are going to be investing in it and consumers are keep going to grow and inventory is also going to keep growing in that space. On that note, I really thank you everybody. Thanks Gagan, Orgo, Rohit and Sid for this wonderful session and thank you very much. Thank you all. Thanks Vishal. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, 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 thanks everyone. See you. Thank you everyone for sharing your point of view with our audience. Now we'll head to the next session. Stay connected to your screens.